Deceit 2, the sequel to Deceit, was released on the 14th of September, so I'm a few days late to this, but this video is going to be a quick optimization guide showing you how to get the most stable performance out of the game. Obviously, being a smaller, newer title, performance is going to be something that will be worked on by the developers as time goes on, and of course, being newly released, there are a few weird glitches, especially affecting performance and how some things are rendered, so those will hopefully be patched out as time goes on. So, looking past the game's reviews, let's get straight into the optimization guide. This video is not going to focus on Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC's performance. We're only going to be focusing on the game here. So without further ado, I'll head across to Steam and play the game here. When you fire up the game for the first time, you should be able to choose a server region. Choose the one that's closest to you for the best performance, but you should be able to change this later on. On the main menu, head across to the three lines in the top right, they're a little bit difficult to see, but inside of here, we can head to options and change the server region here if you find that you chose the wrong one to begin with. Unfortunately, no African servers, so it'll be quite delayed for South African players like me, but anyways, looking at the video tab at the very top, we'll start with display. First of all, you'll want the game set to full screen for the best possible performance, but unfortunately, we're not able to change the resolution here. It's one simple option and that's it it's your native monitor resolution. I'm using an ultra wide monitor, but recording in standard 16 by 9 for YouTube, so running this in full screen mode isn't feasible for me. If you're using a 1080p or 2K monitor or anything for that matter, having the set to full screen should give you the best performance, but because the recording would really be thrown off if I went ultra wide, I'll need to keep it on borderless, full screen for now, or even windowed. Unfortunately, these are the only options we have. Then, as for graphics, we'll start off with colorblindness mode. Obviously, you can change these as you need, as for the strength and gamma here as well. These all should have practically no effect on your performance, and of course, you'll need to set them if you need any of these options to be changed. Then, down to graphics quality. At the very top, we can use auto set to set all of the options to the best guess for our current system, but we'll be customizing these anyway. Using this button is a really good place to start. If you don't like it automatically setting it, you can also use the presets over here between low all the way up to epic. One of the options that isn't set by anything is NVIDIA DLSS. I'd highly recommend pushing this option to either auto or preferably quality in order to get the best performance out of the game. This should give you a huge boost in performance even on super low end systems. On high end systems, playing on quality should give you a reasonable boost in performance, improve smoothness, reduce stuttering, etc, etc. It's overall a really good option to have set to quality. Of course, you can push this more to the performance side, but you'll notice some weird artifacting and things like that the more to the performance side you go. That being said, you will need an NVIDIA DLSS supporting graphics card, so an RTX NVIDIA GeForce card, in order to use this specific option. On AMD and Intel, as well as unsupported NVIDIA cards, you'll likely not be able to set this at all, and that's okay. It would be good if we had an AMD FSR option here as well, as that supports everyone. In the options here, we also have DLAA. This is NVIDIA's anti-aliasing solution that should help smooth out how the game looks without lowering the resolution at all. So if you're not going to be using DLSS at all and you want the game to be a bit better looking, you can use DLAA here instead. Now when you change any of these options here, assuming you have it set to anything other than off for NVIDIA DLSS, you should go ahead and lower the anti-aliasing quality as low as it should go all the way down to off. Using any sort of upscaler or especially DLAA, which in itself is anti-aliasing, will smooth out aliasing, which is essentially those block blocky pixely lines across your screen from the sharp edges of objects and people, things like that. So you won't need to waste any performance with anti-aliasing turned on if you're using DLSS in any capacity. Now, as I have changed a few of these options for DLSS, the 3D resolution here has changed. Just make sure that if you ever set DLSS to off, that your render resolution is set all the way up to full, otherwise things may be needlessly blurry. When we set it to one of these options here, you'll see it automatically adjust, and that is to be expected. For me, I'll leave it on quality and anti-aliasing turned off. Then global illumination. This has to do with shadows, light, etc, especially ambient occlusion, which is how objects interact with each other 
and having it set to high or above, as mentioned here on the right, we'll use ray tracing methods instead, which will have a huge impact on performance. So you'd likely want the set to medium or even lower for the best possible, most smooth performance. If you have an RTX graphics card, I would assume you get a boosted performance here, but to be honest, leaving it on medium is probably what you'll want to do here at the highest point. Unless, of course, you have tons of performance to go around. Then shadows. Usually you'll want these set much lower as the game should have much smoother performance when you have these set to lower options. And especially on super low end systems, you may need to disable this entirely. Do note that disabling it entirely will make the game look a whole lot different and it'll throw off the whole vibe of everything. So having it set to medium is probably as low as I would recommend going. That being said, pushing it up higher, if you want a better looking, more cinematic experience, you can do that, though do note the performance cost is quite hefty. Anti-aliasing we've been through, it smooths out jagged edges. If you're not using DLSS at all, you can set this to probably medium, otherwise turn it off if you don't mind jagged edges for much better performance. Personally, I would usually leave this option set to off, even with DLSS turned off completely. Then view distance. Most of this game is set out in close quarters, so having this option set down to even near shouldn't result in too much gameplay difference. You're not really going to be missing out on much at all. Most of the game world will still be there, but having this set to lower options should help maintain smoothness in FPS, especially when moving between different areas. Medium or even near is probably a good option. If you have a higher end graphics card, you can raise this to maybe far and forget about it. Then we have textures. This option completely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has and having this option set lower than what you can have it set to isn't going to gain you any extra FPS. It's only going to make the game look a lot worse. That being said, if you push it too high for what your graphics card supports, you will notice massive frame stuttering, lag, etc. Set this depending on how much VRAM you have and you should be good enough to go. Lowering it, you won't gain anything. So we have four options, low, medium, high and epic. If you're running a graphics card with 8 gigabytes of VRAM or more, set it to epic and forget about it. If you have 6 gigabytes or more of VRAM, set it to high, 4, set it to medium and anything below that, set it down to low. Then effects. This once again has to do with lighting, though lighting in particular, not really shadows, and especially visual effects. There'll usually be tons going on, and whenever things are going on, you may notice drops in FPS, especially if they have tons of lighting effects to them. But usually in moments like that, you'll need quick reactions, so having the set too high could cause you some frame stuttering and lag that you wouldn't like in situations where you really need snappy responsiveness. So this is probably an option you'll need to lower to keep your performance consistent, especially while it's in an unoptimized state. But that being said, if you find that you're not dropping FPS in situations where you need to react and there's tons of particles and things like that, you can raise this option back up. Though if you notice any drop in performance, lower it by one notch and leave it there. Then reflections. If we set this option to high or epic, it'll use ray traced reflections rather than screen space reflections. It's a much more costly way of showing reflections in game. So I'd usually recommend setting this to medium or low. Having it set to anything higher is gonna cost you a ton of extra FPS for, to be honest, not much gained except for maybe reflections around corners and things like that that you don't see on your screen. I doubt there'll be a competitive advantage having this set higher, but if you feel like there could be one, then that's probably a reason why you may want to raise it. Scrolling down, we have post-processing. This has to do with depth of field, bloom, etc. If we lower this option too much, you may notice the game becomes a little bit blurry, so you may want to set this down to medium at lowest. This, though, is really your preference and shouldn't have too much of an impact on FPS. Then finally, motion blur. This is once again your preference. Personally, I like having motion blur turned off in all games as it gives me much better visibility, especially when reacting quickly to something. And of course, if you're someone who suffers from motion sickness, turning this off completely could result in much less motion sickness symptoms while playing games. Then scrolling down to the very bottom, advanced graphics. Assuming we're using full screen mode, we're able to enable or disable VSync. I'd pretty much always recommend having this set to off unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up, as having this turned on will result in much more input latency, etc, etc. Finally, at the very bottom, we have a bunch of frame rate limiting options. Obviously, on battery will be useful for laptops, depending on what kind of laptop you have and how long the battery can last. 
set this to 60 or even 30 if you have a much smaller battery capacity in your laptop. Then frame rate limit for the menu. Obviously, you're not going to be worrying about frame rate too much on the main menu, so you can comfortably lower this to 60 and forget about it. Otherwise, if you're really sensitive to stuttering and things like that, you can raise it up. But having this capped on the main menu should result in much less stress on your graphics card, keeping it cooler while we're on the menu, not doing anything, leaving that bit of extra cool for when we actually get in game for the time that it actually matters. Then frame rate limit in background. This will limit the frame rate of the game when you tab out of the game. If you're running in full screen mode, you can comfortably set this all the way down and forget about it. Otherwise in windowed mode, if you're going to be tabbing out to another monitor, you may want to have this set to still 30 or 60, especially if you're checking guides, etc. If you have this set too high, you'll simply be rendering frames that you're not actually looking at. And if you tab out into something like YouTube, you may notice huge stuttering and lag in your actual browser, simply because all of your power is going to the game itself. And of course, you don't need the game running at 300 FPS while you're not even tabbed into it, ready to react. Finally, frame rate limit. This one has to do with the in-game frame rate limit. You should usually leave this on uncapped or unlimited for the best possible performance. But of course, if you're recording with something like OBS and your live streams or recordings are coming out stuttering, especially if it's complaining about encode or overloaded, this is something you'll need to lower slightly below the FPS that you're actually getting. That way, we're leaving some graphics card for your recording or streaming software. With all of these options set, similar to something like mine, as the optimized settings, we can hit apply and hop into game to see what kind of performance we get. On these other tabs, there's not too much else we can change. It's mostly the server region that'll change how you play the game. On the audio tab, we have 3D headphones, which enables binaural audio, which should immerse you much more in the actual game itself. We can enable this for a better, more realistic experience, especially for knowing where things are based on where the sounds are coming from, as it should be more accurate that way. High dynamic range, while you may think gives you better quality to your audio, it actually means that there's a bigger difference between the quiet and loud sounds, meaning that loud sounds will be even louder and quiet sounds even quieter. If that's not something you're looking for, leave this set to off. And that's really about it. So we'll apply, head back, and hop into a game, hopefully if I'm able to find one. I'll pull up a frame counter just so you can see exactly what's going on. And there we go, we're in-game sitting at a comfortable 126 FPS. Oh, it's a little bit stuttery. Around 120 FPS at 2K with a 3080 Ti. Looking in certain directions, FPS seems to drop a little bit, but we're sitting at around 130-ish now with these optimized settings. We'll quickly pause the game at a comfortable 120, options, and on the video tab, disable DLSS and push it all the way to the highest possible settings. We'll apply, and just like that, we drop to 50-ish FPS, so we more than double our FPS simply by optimizing it, and the quality difference is probably indistinguishable. We'll pause it once again, and this time, drop it all the way down to the minimal settings, so low, and apply. The native resolution was dropped to just 30%, and we're setting at 160-ish FPS. You'll note that the lighting and things like that look absolutely terrible, and there's only a handful extra FPS compared to our optimized settings. If we instead enable a DLSS to performance, which actually raises the 3D resolution, things look a lot better. Oh, and obviously things are happening, so they've changed it up quite a bit, but you can see we're sitting at a comfortable 120 FPS with DLSS on performance and everything set all the way down. So we actually gained a ton of performance simply by using quality instead, rendering at a much higher resolution with all of our settings customized way higher than they are now. So we really did get a ton more out of this game. But anyways, that's really about it for the super quick guide. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.